big, big mom, big. I'm Emeril Lagasse. Tonight, we're going to explore the wonderful flavors and textures of an incredible cuisine, Vietnamese cuisine. I'm talking about stir-fried crab meat with cellophane noodles. And then maybe, how about some spicy shrimp rolls? Well, they're actually spicy shrimp spring rolls. Hey, you know. Actually, you know, there's a, a lot of similarities, uh, not only in climate, but uh, certainly a lot of Vietnamese folks that have uh, moved and settled into Louisiana. And we're going to talk about that because it's Vietnamese cuisine, and it's all happening right here on Emerald Live! Happy, happy. That's why we're doing the food of Vietnamese cooking. They use some pork there, too. Before we uh, go on a little tour of some Vietnamese ingredients, how about giving it up for Doc Gibbs and Cliff, huh? Hey, guys, how you doing? Very nice of you. These are uh, some some of the basic ingredients uh, that we found very easily that influence Vietnamese cuisine. And uh, I was talking earlier about the similarities of climates in Louisiana. And uh, also, I tell people that it's amazing what's happened to us in Louisiana in the last just 10 years. Because um, three of the five largest ports last year for, per tonnage for seafood was in Louisiana, and about 80% of those fishing villages are being operated, and a lot of them owned by Vietnamese families. So it's beginning to start influencing a lot of Louisiana. Things like lemongrass and uh, lots of dry mushrooms that are used. This is tamarind right here. And this is actually, we have a dish on the menu called a tamarind glazed pork chop that has green mole. And this is fresh tamarind, that, uh, how it comes from the tr in the tree. And then there are little seeds and little pods. You can actually buy it in block form like this or in package form as well. Lots of rice noodles. And uh, I think one of the most interesting things beside, in there's three regions in Vietnam that influence the food. Simple things like bok choy and bamboo shoots and banana leaves and tofu and cilantro, which they call coriander and mint. But one of the most interesting things we were just talking about, these sticks right here, this is uh, called aga aga. And uh, it's a huge ingredient used uh, in the cuisine of Vietnam. But the thing that's interesting about this stuff, it's kind of jelly, kind of jelly-like inside. What I told people uh, just a little while ago, what we uh, never think about with aga aga being such in a staple of Vietnamese cuisine, it's also one of the main ingredients that we use here in America because aga aga is actually that jelly that they color that they use for piping on birthday cakes and anniversary cakes and all that stuff when they write on cakes here. So very, very interesting. They use a lot of peanuts and uh, uh, lots of uh, sauces that they use, particularly this one here. This is uh, called nyak mom, and it's an oyster sauce. And uh, we're going to do something later on with this. Matter of fact, we're going to do a lot of things. When we come back, Stir-fried crab meat with cellophane noodles. Stick around. We'll be right back. Rock in.
Welcome back, everybody. Kicking up Vietnamese food a few notches. You know, I said oyster sauce a minute ago. I lost my head. She, like, looked at me like, fish sauce. Fish sauce. It's that knock mom. I mean, you try saying that and then say fish sauce. That's what it is. Three crabs or something like that. Whatever. Hey. Knock mom. Fish sauce. <laughs> Actually, we got some knock mom. We're gonna knock mom it up a few notches. <laughs> We've got some of these mushrooms that they use. Most of the time, what they'll do, though, they'll clean them up. See, they got this kind of stem here that's chewy. And uh, so we definitely want to clean that up. We'll just take that away. These were actually dried. And there's a few different names for these. But for sure, what you want to do, I mean, if you go and order Vietnamese food and you get one like this big in your rice, <laughs> you feel a little ripped off, don't you? <laughs> I mean, half the container's taken up with this and, you know, where's the rice? So what we're going to do is you kind of just twist them like that, and then we're going to just kind of julienne them or chiffonade them, whatever you want to call it. I call it digestion. <laughs> then I have some snow peas, another ingredient used that I julienne up as well. Have a little shallot. You could use red onion. Beautiful crab meat. The region that uh, this dish is inspired from is the northern part of Vietnam called Noi. Is that correct over there, my friend? Hanoi. Hanoi, excuse me. It's a Noi. I know Noi was in there somewhere. <laughs> That's why we've got the police always, food police are always here. <laughs> so now that we got these mushrooms that we're going to do, beautiful crab meat. This particular in Hanoi, they use a lot of crab. It's much cooler. The food's lighter, generally not as spicier, OK? Bamboo, little shoots, green onions, some garlic. Hey, they use garlic, you know. Yeah. Now watch this. These are rice noodles. And uh, they use a lot of these in their cooking, in their spring rolls, and lots of things. And they come in these packages that you can find. And basically what happens is that you've got to reconstitute them, the rice noodles. So what you do is you take just some hot water. Unlike pasta, you would, you know, you would have to, like, put the pasta in the hot water. It's better to do this technique. I use, like, this part of the spoon and just kind of break them up a little bit like this. And they take about maybe 20, 30 minutes. They'll absorb a lot of the water. And then what you want to do is you want to pat them dry. So we'll let those be over here. And basically, this is what they look like in about 30 minutes. They kind of have this like weird kind of feeling, but they're delicious. Pat them dry. Basically. The thing about wok cooking is you always got to have all of your ingredients together because it goes so quickly. So you want to get all of your ingredients together before you start doing this type of cooking. A little bit of oil. They use a lot of peanut oil as well in their cooking. Now we're going to start. I'm going to show you how simple this is. We're going to begin with the peas, some shallot. That was like a multiple bam. <laughs> the mushrooms. See, I like the shovel thing, too. It's a beautiful thing. Oh, don't escape. See, really, really quickly, we're just going to suck. Goes really fast. The crab meat's already cooked. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add the shoots. We're going to add, ah, add all the garlic. Why not? 
green onions. Then what we're gonna do, now do is we're gonna slowly start working in these cellophane noodles like this. These rice noodles. <laughs> this is your brain on Emerald Live. <laughs> Then we're gonna hit it with a little pepper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is when the uh, knock mom comes into, uh, into play. They use a lot of this. And then right at the end, what we're gonna do, just gonna stir fry this real quick. Oh, this is looking good, huh? Right at the end, what you want to do is that's when you add the crab meat. It's already cooked. You don't want to be breaking it all up and shredding it. And then what we're going to then do, ah, this looks good. Looks pretty good, huh, ladies? Now, I'm going to start serving some of this up. And this would be a good time for you to go get one of those frozen things because right after this, we're going to do a spicy shrimp spring roll that's going to blow your mind. Stick around. <laughs> So we just did our stir fry and uh, from the northern region. And now what we're going to do, looks good, huh? Yeah. OK. <laughs> Mikey's ready. Just in case you need a little essence, they don't have this in Vietnam yet. Kicked it up a little bit, you know. Now, in the center of Vietnam, where the food is more of the royalty, the city of Yu, they have a lot of small tasting portions of the food. The food there is a lot more spicier because the influence with chilies, with hot chilies, little bird's eye peppers. This is some different chilies also that they have, dry, as well as the little baby serrano ones, little baby cayennes that they use. And they usually use them in whole form or they'll what they call, they'll smack them. What, they, what it means is when they cook, they'll like use the back of that utensil to break the chili, to release the heat out of it. Because all of the heat in the chili is in the membrane. It's not in the seeds. And this is a, another dish that's very popular. It's a spring roll, but we have to make a filling for us, and we have to make a sauce. Now, even though that this is Chinese sausage, they have this and use this in their cuisine, which I kind of like. I dice some of that up. I have onion, and I have bok choy, the tops of bok choy and shrimp, which are plentiful, just like in the Gulf. Some peanut oil and garlic, because they use a lot of peanuts as well in their cuisine. But just plain, they'll use them in that. How's the noodles, ladies? Great, fabulous. You guys all right over there? Mm -hmm. you guys ought to keep the noise down a little bit. You're talking too much. <laughs> all right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start making this simple dish. 
And we're going to start with some peanut oil, which they use. And what we're going to do is we're going to just sort of move that oil around, coat, get it nice and fiery hot. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm sort of tempering this little baby wok that I have here on the sides, just like you would do a saute pan. And then very simply what we're going to do is start with some onion. Once the onion cooks a little bit, get a little flavor out of that onion. The next ingredient that we're going to add is we're going to add a little bit of the bok choy first, and then what we're going to do is add the shrimp. Now, those shrimp ain't seasoned, so I'm going to season it with a little bit of salt and pepper. And then what we're going to do to just kind of give this thing a little heat, we're going to take a couple of peppers like that so I can show you. Put them right in the side like that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to just sort of work that. The shrimp are going to cook pretty fast. So at this point now, we're going to add some garlic. All right, we'll add it all, all right. The bok choy and the sausage and whatever peanuts are around. And we're just going to quickly stir fry this. Oh, look at this one. He's trying to get away, huh? Yeah, you ever go to one of those restaurants? And he goes like that. Here. I usually try to catch it. All right, we're going to turn this right off right now, guys. Don't worry, the Food Network, they'll buy you a new coat. And this is sort of the filling now that we have for our spring rolls. We're going to let this cool. Now that fish sauce that I told you about that they use a lot, they also, what they do is they take this nok mom, this is a true story, and they turn it into nuwak chom. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Hey, you know, when Nok Chom meets Nawak Chom, you know? Anyhow, basically what this is, they use a mortar and pestle. Now, I didn't have one from Vietnam. Mine's is from, you know, beyond the border. Theirs would be a lot more coarse. What they do is this. Check this out. The reason why they do that Nawak Chom with Nok Mom there's a combo deal in there. I'm not making this stuff up, honestly. <laughs> You're all starting to play with my emotions right now. <laughs> what we do is we take a little bit of sugar, and they take garlic, smart guys. They take one of those hot chilies like that. And then what they do is they don't use the juice of the lime. They use the whole lime, so they, what they do is they peel the lime like this and take the skin off. And the pith, like I have here, and they use that. And then they use a little, little sesame sometimes. What they do is they start just pulverizing this with the mortar and pestle. And they just kind of work it like that. And then they take these ingredients. Oops, forgot one. That was uh, rice vinegar. And what they do is they take this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they take the knock mom and now they make it into Nuwak Chom. 
What they do is they do this. They add this to this. It's sort of like their salsa, if you will. And they mix it all up like that. And this is actually what's going to be the dipping sauce for the spring roll, which I'm going to show you after the break how to make it, how to finish it, and certainly how to eat it. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. If you're just joining us, shame on you. We're cooking Vietnamese cuisine tonight. Doc Gibbs and Cliff are in the house, and we're live in New York City! All right. So we've got that filling that we made, the shrimp and the Chinese sausage and the bok choy and the garlic, and you had some already, right? Yeah, we were. Don't worry. They, no problem. They'll get you a new shirt. Yeah. We got some bean sprouts, some carrot, some coriander, which is cilantro. They use a lot of this. And fresh mint. Now, they take, these are rice paper. These are rice wrappers. Very thin. This is what they make the spring rolls with. I'm going to show you how and what the technique is. You can't take them all out. They get exposed to the air, they'll dry up, and they turn into, like, Frisbees. <laughs> so don't do that. And they're not, like, even big Frisbees. They turn into, like, little ones. You got to bring water almost up to a boil, or at least really, really hot, like you can see right here. Because what you got to do is you got to do this little technique for these spring rolls. You got to put them inside the water. Watch what it does. It's like magic. Now, you should only have the water as hot as you can really stand it. Or you can use like a tong like this. And what you can do is, a couple of seconds, you can flip them over. And that's what you got to do for these to work. You see? Then, you're ready to work. What you then do, now that you've got your rice paper, you put some of the filling. I mean, there's a little common sense that goes with this. I mean, obviously, you're not going to put, you know, a shovel full. <laughs> and then, a little bean sprout and some carrot. And they love lots of coriander as well as mint. Then the key is taking that rice paper and tucking it in like this, okay? One time. Then what you want to do is you want to fold, then roll that over both sides. And when you get the both sides, then you can just sort of roll them up like this. And then you seal them. Now, sometimes they'll serve them just like this with a dipping sauce, like the Nuwak Cham. And they have other ones, too, as well. Then sometimes what they'll do is they'll fry them. They'll make them smaller and they'll fry them. You got to make sure that the papers goes together. I'm going to show you one more of these. They're really, really fantastic. They're really light, and they're great for a party. You can make them, you just keep them covered with a damp cloth. You can keep them in the ice box. The sauce can be in the ice box. Guests come over, family. You can just take them out with the dipping sauce. They're absolutely phenomenal, just like that, even if you don't want them fried. Again, 
There I was, <laughs> driving Miss Daisy in Vietnam. <laughs> you just kind of set it in like that. And use that tongue. Now, you don't leave them in there long. You just like get it, and then you flip it over. Then you just take it out, let it drain a little bit, and you're ready to go. You can make them ahead of time. Just kind of be patient with them. Lay them out like this. This is big, big stuff in Vietnamese cooking. A little bit of that filling. Again, the bean sprout and the carrot. Plenty of cilantro, plenty of coriander, and a few pieces of mint. Then again, roll it over and tuck it so that you got it pretty tight, but you don't want to break it. Then you fold this, again, this side here in and you fold this side in and then you just finish rolling them up make sure it's together and that's how the spring rolls now if you want to keep them if you want to keep them where you just want to dip them like this the fillings cooked you just chill them you can put them right in that no wok chom delicious or what you can do you can fry some. But you gotta turn them. You gotta turn them. I just used like a little spoon or a ladle, whatever. You gotta turn them. Now you're gonna get some blowouts, you know, too. It just happens. When we come back, I'm gonna show you how to eat these guys. And then it's on to beef balls. Stick around. So we got, I moved the uh, Noak Charm over here. Sounds like a racehorse, huh? <laughs> Noak Charm is in the head. These are the ones that we fried. Now, they're not like egg rolls, you know? They're not gonna get like that color. These are like these spring rolls. And um, I like them just like this. I, I, I prefer a lot of times, because the filling is cooked, that uh, I, like, I like them like this. They're so light, particularly like in the summer months. They're delicious like this, and you just dip them in there. So I'm going to do a little assortment, a little assortment plate. Basically, what we're going to do is I'm going to take, with a serrated knife, a couple of them that were fried. Look good, huh? Yeah. You take me a dozen. <laughs> and then what we're going to do is we'll take one that had not been fried, Cut them on a little angle like this. Oh, yeah, babe. Happy, happy, happy. And then what you just do is you just kind of use a little bit of the coriander, just kind of around. You can use like a little scallion. And then basically, the Noak Charm, they just take this and they just hit it with it like that. Whoa. 
You don't know what's happening right now. All right, I'll let you take, uh, take one or two that you like, and I'll pass them over at your convenience. I like to just dip them in there, too, and just absolutely fantastic. So I hope you get a little, uh, little action with some spring rolls. They're, uh, they're wonderful. <laughs> no cheap seats here. Just a six-month wait. All right. Now we're going down, way down to the south. I guess I'll make another plate. See, I can work fast, too, you know. She's saying, I can eat fast. So these are the ones that haven't been fried. What do you think of those? Not bad for a Portuguese, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very good. I'm going to bring another plate. You can make some friends over there. Make sure my friend over here gets one. She's got... She's mad at me right now. <laughs> oh, look at this one. It had a little blowout. I love when that happens. All right, my friend up there in the cheap seats, come down here, will you? There's only one thing that you get that they don't. Bam! Just like that, all right? There you go. This, uh, this next dish, as we go down to the south, to, uh, to Saigon, this is another traditional dish of Vietnam. And basically, hey, take it easy back there, huh? <laughs> Guys are eating the chairs. <laughs> Save us at least the seats. And uh, what they do is they do, you know, in Saigon, in the south, there's a lot more French Hey, guys. You all right now? Just relax, enjoy life a little bit. In Saigon, there's a lot of influences of French cuisine. So there's a lot of potatoes, and there's a lot of asparagus, and there's a lot of classic approaches beside their ingredients that they use, and one being sort of a consomme base. That's like a clarified stock. Very classical. And this is a very traditional dish in this region. They take beef. And what they do is they'll sort of cut it in pieces like this, well trimmed. And then they make a marinade. For that marinade, what they do they take some of that nok chum. Sugar. <laughs> this is a little cornstarch and a little flour. Sesame oil. And a little H2O water. Then what they do they sort of dissolve this like this and actually what they do is they season the meat very lightly with salt and pepper and they sort of marinate it in this mixture. Uh, you can also lay it out and spread it that way if you'd like. But I think you're getting the hint here. 
They marinate this. You get all of this flavor. See the reaction that that's happening right there? It's the wildest thing. Then, what they do, they'll probably do that at least 24 hours. At least 12, 24 hours. Let it get like some wonderful flavor. And then what they do, it's fascinating to me. They'll um, get the ice box, they'll get the meat, whatever chunks that they cut it in. They can dice it, cut it smaller, cut it like this. But after they marinate this, see how it breaks down like that? Then the meat gets very, very tender. The thing that they do is now they take this and they put it and they grind it. We're going to grind it a little bit at a time. See how it kind of looks like, it, not only is it marinated, but they'll grind it like this. And they don't like make a paste, they just really use a cold bowl, sort of coarse like this, like I have it. And then, they'll put it inside of this here. Sometimes they'll add a little cilantro, or sometimes they'll just keep it with the flavors of that. But what they do, after they grind all of that, is they take a little piece of it, like this. And I believe in this tremendously. And this is obviously something they might have gotten from the French cuisine. They just sort of make these little tiny meatballs like this. And what they'll do is they'll poach it in some water first. That way, it cooks real quick and they can taste the meat to adjust the seasoning before they finish rolling all of the meatballs out. Now, what happens is they get beef stock and they flavor it with, whoops. They flavor it with glass, I guess. I had some beef juice on my hand. <laughs> well, it didn't break, so it looks like we're gonna eat, you know? They flavor it. They flavor it with, with uh, green onions. And they'll put like coriander inside of it. And then what they do is they, once they taste it and it's perfectly seasoned, they'll roll them out into little meatballs. And then they'll drop them inside of this beef consomme. Or if you don't wanna, don't know how to make a consomme, you could use just a good quality beef broth. And we're gonna add all the meatballs in there. And when we come back after the break, after we rock out to Doc Gibbs, I'm gonna show you how they finish it. Stick around, we'll be right back. some kicked up Vietnamese food tonight. You guys having a good time so far? Yeah. Now, what happens after you do that and it simmers for a while, all the balls start coming up to the top like this. And when they start coming up to the top, you let it slowly simmer. This is how they finish it. They get a couple of, of the beef balls like that, and then they take that beef broth And that Noak Cham, they just do a little of that drizzle in there, okay? And then they garnish it with a little bit of cilantro like this. Where'd she go? Come on, baby. I got two spoons in there. It's very, very hot. And that's it. That's the food of classic, traditional dish of Vietnam. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Hey, what can I say? I'm Emma Lugasi. Thanks for joining me tonight. See you tomorrow, everybody.